this expectation of customer service, this expectation that your opinions and your reviews and so on are taken seriously as a, as a first class citizen is the major thread running through society today. Now this makes politicians' lives and senior executives' lives basically nightmarish. Because like I say, we're trying to do something, we're trying to set up a, an economic cluster in a place where we don't really know what we're doing it for because we can't predict the technology even three years out. We haven't got the money to spend on it as, as the Californians did 30 years ago, and everything we do will be reviewed in public by thousands of people, all of whom think that they're the most important person on the internet. That's all of you guys, as well as the mythical people out there. So this is a problem. So we need to redefine the project. We need to start to look at things on a very long-term view. We need to say goodbye to the sort of pseudo-fashionable digital movements. We need, to s we need to relax a little bit and stop worrying about social media and if, oh my god, if I don't have a Twitter account, nobody's going to buy my chips. Nobody's going to go to my pub if I don't have a Facebook page. And things like that. And instead, reassess how we can do this for the long term. To that, I have four things to think about before we get into the panel. The first one is that you cannot succeed by being a slightly grimy photocopy of somebody else's ideas. Silicon Valley is Silicon Valley is Silicon Valley and it will remain there and it's weird. If you've ever been to Silicon Valley, and I recommend you go, you'll realize that it's actually kind of rubbish. <laughs> it's like a big industrial park about 100 miles long. It's not somewhere you would ever want to live. It's not somewhere you would ever want to raise your children. It's not somewhere you would ever want to retire. It's actually quite nightmarish. It's obvious it's like that. It used to, 30 years ago, it, were, it was uh, orchards, apricot orchards. Whereas Dublin is a city of thousands of years of history. People live here already. So you can't bulldoze it down and build an office park. So you have to pay attention to what you already have and don't try and replicate something else. So the first thing you have to do is retain and expose local talent. This is a very well-educated place full of extraordinary people. Some of them are a bit weird, but, <laughs> but they're kind of cool. And so the first job is not to Look to, where, look to other places and see what they're doing. But the first job is to look inwards and find out what you have. And allow them to shine. To concentrate on all of the opportunities that are already here. If you want to showcase your talents, well, it's culture night tonight. It's your island final on Sunday. Do something with that. Don't try and make the next Facebook clone or, or build a whole industry around something that might be bought by Twitter. Make your own thing. Especially, num point number two, and this is the most important point, I think, is be very, very careful about how you judge success. It's a truism that says that any number you put on the wall will go up. If you gamify your success, it will go up. If you want to lose weight, put your weight on a, you know, weigh yourself and stick it on a post-it note and put it on the fridge and your weight will magically drop. It's a thing of human psychology. If you want to judge your success by certain financial metrics, then you will skew your culture towards that. But you have to take a long-term view of what those metrics actually mean for your society. Let me give you an example of something. I work for, um, for the uh, Danish city, a city called Aarhus. 
Aarhus is the second biggest town in Denmark, it's for, it's, which makes it, you know, three people, basically. <laughs> but Aarhus is a, there's a university there, it's a very nice place, it's a little harbor, and they're, re they're, they're regenerating. And they're very excited by the idea of a smart city. Smart city with a capital S, capital C, the idea of that is that you take lots of sensors, very cheap sensors, you put them all over the city, you connect them to the internet, and you make that data available to everybody who lives there, and it enables them to optimize the way they live their lives. A good example of that is public transport. You know, many cities around the world, perhaps even Dublin, I don't know, many cities around the world have the locations of their buses and the locations of their trains and taxis available online so that you can, you know, you need to get the bus, but you're wondering if you have time for an extra pint, and you look at your phone, and you see the bus is 20 minutes away, and so you can have the extra pint, and therefore your life is made better. Smart cities. And there are four major smart city software vendors, IBM and Siemens being two of them, and IBM are pitching very, very hard for this Danish town. They want to build all of the sensors, they want to put the software in there, they want to create this system which enables the mayor to optimize his city. But we looked at the city and we realized that the thing it was most known for was the fact it has more pavement cafes per capita than any other town in Europe. The people of Aarhus' idea of a good time is cycling very slowly to work via three cafes and watching the good looking people go by. That's what they deem as success in their town. It's what I deem as success when I go to that town. It's a very good view. <laughs> but that's not how IBM deems success. IBM deems success as being able to get their engineers from an American suburb into a car along a freeway to an American car park, into a tall office building, into a cubicle, work there for 12 hours, and then back home again. That's how they optimize their cities. And so the software for uh, IBM's smart cities idea is, has the score based on transit time. Shorter is better, because you're sat in a car on a freeway. But in Aarhus, transit time, the longer the better. And in fact, what they want to optimize for are pretty girls on bicycles, and coffees, and conversation, and romance, and serendipity, and all of those nice things. <laughs> and so we come to a crunch point. The people in Aarhus have to look at this software, and they have to decide, do we buy this? because it's cool and shiny and you know, we're told that smart cities and social media and all this stuff, if we don't do it now, we'll somehow be destined to live in the 18th century. If we don't do that now, then maybe we're going to be screwed. But actually, you look at it and you say, well, if we implement that, it will change the culture of our city for the worst forever. So the first thing you have to do is be very, very careful about how you judge success. And everybody in this room needs to get together and decide what it is that they want to define the success of Dublin, of their neighborhoods, of their street, of their lives. In Silicon Valley, it's huge amounts of not real money. But we've done that in Europe, and it didn't work. <laughs> so let's be very careful about that. And the third thing and this comes from that, is we have to take a step back in our individual areas and work out what it is that makes that individual area great in and of itself. I come to Dublin quite a lot, and it's, um, it's a lovely place, and, and, and like I say, extremely educated. And you can think of all of the other adjectives that describe your, your neighborhoods. I'll leave that to you. In, Silica, in Tech City, Silicon Roundabout, in London, the thing that I'm pushing for there is the fact that the neighborhood is massively creative, it's full of lunatics, but it's also next to a very ethnically diverse areas of London. And we have deep connections just down the road to India and Bangladesh and Eastern Europe and South America. And those are the inherent advantages that we have in London that we can use if only we'll go out the street and walk about 800 yards east. Ireland has just the same advantages, but in different places. You need to step back and look at what it is that makes you all very special and maximize that. 
After all, it's massively irritating, I'm sure, to watch people in New York in St. Patrick's Day dressing in lots of green and proclaiming their Irishness, despite the fact that they've not been here for four generations. It's equally as irritating to see people in other cities dressing up as San Franciscans. <laughs> this isn't San Francisco, thank God. It's sunnier here, for one thing. So don't try and replicate Silicon Valley. Don't try and replicate London. Be Dublin. Take everything that there is that is great about this place and work out what it is that you want to be great in the future. And concentrate on that. And the final thing, the final, final, final thing before I sit down, is that this takes a very long time. No cluster has ever been built in less than 30 years. For those of you who are hoping to create a Facebook app startup and flip it in the next six months, good for you, but that's not how it works. It's going to take 30 years. And so you have to start not with the digital natives and hope that the 12-year-olds will save you. Because actually, if you go and talk to them, you'll find that they're just as confused by these things as you are. You have to start with the three-year-olds and the four-year-olds and the five-year-olds. You have to look at your education systems. You have to look at what you're teaching them in school. You have to ask the guy, well, maybe not that. You have to ask the developers what it is that they wish they'd learned when they were three years old and implement that. And in 30 years' time, you'll have a cluster built on a bedrock of strong community values and deep education without the need for foreign money, without the need for a bubble, and without the need to dress up as Californians. And I think that undoubtedly will be much better. And then you'll have thousands of people coming from South America and Africa asking you for advice on how to be Irish. And that might be quite a nice thing. <laughs>